Hi, a lot of people get confused between competitive coding and data structures and algorithms. Um, so today, to clear this doubt, I have invited Fraz. He is a student at DTU. He recent he interned at uh, SAP Labs, and right now he's placed at a really big company. I'm not supposed to reveal the name until he you know joins the company. So without any further ado, uh, we're just going to discuss about the different things that you need to get a good job at a nice high paying company and what's the difference between competitive coding and data structures and algorithms do you actually need competitive coding do you actually have to go and compete with thousands of people to get a good job to find these answers let's watch the interview hey guys uh, today i'm with fraz and we're going to talk a bit about competitive coding and data structures and algorithms fraz also runs a youtube channel uh, it's a YouTube channel where he solves lead code questions. So for us, how is your YouTube channel different from, you know, other coding channels out there? Uh, so basically, Harish, like what most of the YouTube channels do is they try explaining you the solution of the problem. But uh, the important things for the learner is to actually understand what the intuition behind a solution is or how to actually put it in front of an interviewer. So that is the main motive behind the channel that I try explaining the intuition. And then I try how I try explaining how to build up a solution starting from the brute force to the most optimized solution for a particular problem. Got it. Got it. So this is more useful during, you know, the actual interview process. Yes, exactly. Or uh, like this is a question that a lot of people have. Both sare comments aate rehte. How is data structures and algorithms different from competitive coding? All right, yeah. So it's a pretty famous question. So basically, uh, in competitive programming, like um, in during an interview, when we are you're sitting for an actual interview, the questions that you are asked is from data structures and algorithms. And when uh, the competitive programming is basically mathematics, where you uh, like actually compete between several participants all over the world. For example, let us take a website called Code Forces. So there are weekly contests on it, and you you participate in uh, in those contests, and you have rankings on it. So these are different from like your uh, interviews. Uh, although they are going to help you during your interviews, but the type of questions which are asked during the interviews are mostly based on your data structure, how to uh, solve a specific problem using a particular data structure rather than uh, mathematics. And talking about the first round, like uh, when a company is arriving to our campus, the first round is usually conducted by several platforms uh, such as HackerRank, Hacker Earth. So you can find the competitive program questions in those rounds. Yeah, so we are not, uh, we will not find them in the actual interviews, like the face-to-face -face interviews, but we might find them in the first round of the campus because they have to shortlist some candidates to take their interview and for that they are conducting these rounds and when they are providing this job to the uh, these companies such as hacker rank or hacker Earth, to select a few candidates for the interview in those type of rounds they provide you the competitive programming questions okay so what you're saying is competitive coding is essentially the screening round but once you go to the final rounds of an interview with the interviewer it's not that useful it's just the dsa concepts Exactly. Yeah. The interviewer, they want you to answer the this data structures and algorithm questions rather than pure competitive programming. Okay. So if I'm running short of time, if say I'm in third year or fourth year, uh, what do you prefer? Do you prefer people to, you know, uh, do a lot of hacker rank questions and get some stars? Or do you ask them to just learn a bit of competitive coding and then focus more on data structures and algorithm concepts? Yeah. So to be honest, like there are 10% companies who are going to ask you the questions from competitive programming and rest 90% of the companies, they ask you just data structures and algorithms. For example, we have Microsoft, we have Amazon, we have even the Google. So they all ask questions from data structures and algorithms. There are a few startups such as Code Nation, and then there is Sprinkler. So they are more oriented towards competitive programming. So if you're short of time, then I would advise you to do data structures and algorithms because like uh, it is majority of the company are asking DS and Elgo. So if you are in your first year, obviously you can start with competitive coding. Yeah. If you're short of time, then you should go for data structures algorithms. Great. So majority of my audience is first year college students. So can you give a quick, you know, roadmap about which different platforms to use uh, if you're preparing for, you know, DSA and competitive programming? All right. So as I told you, we have a lot of platforms. We have uh, Hacker Rank, we have Hacker Earth. Then we have Lead Code, Geeks for Geeks, and Interview Bit, and a lot of others. But I would advise you to go for Lead Code because uh, the questions there are well organized. They are distributed into topics. Like uh, if you want to solve questions from dynamic programming, then you have a playlist on dynamic programming. And if you want to solve questions on, uh, like, say, graph, then, then you have a sorted questions on graph according to the difficulty level. 
and according to the percentage of acceptance. So it is a pretty uh, like simple platform to use. Let me just share my screen so that I can show that how actually we can get the best use of it. Hmm. All right. So let us first discuss the uh, discuss the strategy for those who are in the first year and who have enough time in hand. So for them, they should go to the contest. And in the contest that uh, they will find there are weekly contest. So they have to participate in this weekly contest. And let's say you are able to solve uh, two questions out of the four which are in the contest. So the, for the rest of the two questions, you should see the discussion. So there's a well organized discussion section for each of the problems where people they post their solutions, their strategies, you can go to the discuss. And from there, let's say uh, you come to a new data structure with the help of which the question was actually solved. So you can learn about the data structure. For example, let us say you don't know about a, st a structure called monotone, monotone stack. So you can search. You can search monotone stack on Google and then you will come up to a blog. You can read about the data structure and then try solving the problem. You can also watch video uh, from YouTube. So I think the topmost video is from like our channel. So you can watch, you can learn about the, you can learn about this data structure and you can come back and solve the problem. So that is how you learn where, during the contest. And for those who don't have much time, what they can do is they can go to the problems. And let's say they want to practice problems, the top most liked questions or the top most interview questions, they can solve it from here. And if they are weak in a certain subject, if they are weak in a certain topic, such as DFS or trees or strings, they can do it from here. So these are the questions from Eri. They can sort them according to the difficulty level. So this is hard. This is sorted from easy, medium and difficult. So they can try solving few problems from easy, then go to the medium and try four or five problems from the medium, and then they can go to the hard problems. So this is how you can get best use of this platform. Yeah, now can we move on to uh, competitive coding and sh share some platforms that are used there? Yeah, so uh, you can practice competitive coding on Code Forces and Code Chef. So you will have some short contest on Code Forces. You can participate in those contests. So there are questions A, B, C, D, E, and F. So let's say uh, this, this is the same thing with this as well. Like if you are able to solve few questions, let us say up to C, then you must try to solve the question D as well after the contest. That is called upsolving. You will learn with the help of upsolving. You will learn about new data structures. And one of the most important strategy uh, is to look at other solution. So it might be possible that you came up with a solution that takes 20 line and the code is not so clean. And when you look at other solution, the same it might be using the same algorithm or it might be using some other algorithm and the code is so short, it is a four or five lines. Then you can actually learn that how to organize your code with the help of that. For competitive programming, I think you should go for code forces. Okay, you prefer code forces, great. Yeah, uh, yeah. Cool, let's just quickly summarize. Uh, if you have a lot of time in hand, do a little, little bit of competitive coding and then focus on DSA. If you do not have time at all, then focus on DSA. So that's the conclusion exactly. that we can do. Yes. Yeah. Great. Uh, okay. Okay. Last question: Is it necessary for everyone to be a four-star, five-star coder on CodeChef? So these are the ratings. Like the ratings, it might go up in a certain contest, and then it might go down. It is the way that it goes. Sometimes you're a five-star coder, and after a contest, you become a four-star coder. But then when you're sitting for an interview, uh, it is as it is a thing about which you can compete with your friends. But talking about the interviews, they hardly care about it whether you're a five-star coder or a six-star coder. Also, I would like to share another platform for practicing SQL, like which might be asked in your interviews. So sometimes you're asked about the SQL queries, you will be given a schema and then according to that, you will have to answer a few queries. So for that, we have a platform called HackerRank. You can go to HackerRank and you can practice SQL questions from here. You can actually sort them according to the difficulty, easy, medium or hard, and according to the topics, subdomains. You can also practice from lead code, but there are limited number of questions which are available for free on lead code. So you can practice from hacker rank. So SQL is also a major part of the interview. Yeah, sometimes uh, some companies, they do ask SQL queries. Amazing. Great. Thanks a lot for us for joining in. I'm pretty sure, you know, we were able to clear a couple of misconceptions about how things work.